everyone and welcome back. Happy holidays. Hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. Now this is a requested video that's been on my video list for a long time. When I say a long time, I mean a long time and I'm just not filming it. So thank you so much for being patient. It's all about manicure kit essentials and what I recommend you should have in your kit. Now, as you already know, I've always loved to do everything on my own anywhere from coloring my hair to polishing my nails and everything in between ever since I was a little girl. I think I started coloring my hair at the age of 18 and polishing my nails at the age of nine, maybe 10. So yes, I love anything to do with beauty. So here's what you will need for a well-rounded manicure kit. Let's start off with cotton balls. Now, I know a lot of you use the regular cotton balls. I used to use those, but I prefer to use these cotton rounds only because I have better control um, in removing my nail polish or even removing my gel nail polish. So whatever your choice is, cotton balls, you definitely need them, or cotton rounds. I prefer to use acetone, pure acetone, because it's much stronger and it's very, very powerful and it works best at removing nail polish. Yes, I know it's harsh. Now, I don't recommend using this for those who have dry skin or um, nails that split very easily, but you can also use non-acetone polish removers. They're less aggressive and does not dissolve the polish as effectively though. Now, it's really important to clean your nails even in the shower, but you have to do it very, very carefully. You can either use a nail bristle brush or even a toothbrush. They both work very well. If you're too rough, you can cause a gap between the nail and the nail bed, and it is susceptible to bacterial or fungal infections, and you would not want that. So scrub gently with either one of these. Nail clippers, now I know you have nail clippers somewhere in your drawer, in your house. They come in two different sizes. As far as I know, a smaller size, which I have, and also have a larger size. But yeah, nail clippers, there's not much to say about nail clippers. You should all have nail clippers at home somewhere. Nail nippers, do you need them? No, do you have to have them? No, these are very dangerous, especially if you're not very careful. If you use these, you have to be extremely careful. You'll end up cutting live cuticle skin. Not only is it painful and bloody, but also puts you at risk for infection. So nippers should only be used to cut dead skin like hangnails. There are cuticle removers to soften and dissolve dry cuticles, but I never use them. I find that they're a waste of time and money. I just soak my hand in water for a minute or so to soften the cuticle and gently push them back with an orange wood stick. Speaking of orange wood sticks, I prefer to use these. You can find these all over the place. These are great for pushing the cuticle back. Now I have used metal cuticle pushers, but I cannot stand those because I don't like the feeling of metal on top of my nail. They just give me the goosebumps, so I stay away from them. There are so many files out there with many different grit numbers. Now, the higher the grit number is, the smoother the file is. I've been using a padded cushion 100, 180 grit file for a long time, and I find that this works best for my nails. And I avoid, and you should too, avoid coarse grit files and metal files as well. Now, I recently started using a double etched glass file. I alternate between these two. It's a very fine to medium grit. Supposedly, you can file your nails in any direction without damaging the nail, and it does work, but you should try to always, always file your nails in one direction from the corner towards the center. So from the corner and towards the center, doing so will prevent your nails from getting weaker and breaking. This is a very soft buffing block. This is my favorite. It is extremely soft and I've used so many over the years. I always buy these. This is a new one. It is very light and I lightly buff the top of my nails before applying regular nail polish or gel polish. It takes away the top oil enamel and gives my nails a smoother surface to paint over. It also helps keep the nail polish stay on longer as well, but you have to be very careful when using this. You don't want to over buff 
because over buffing can result in weak, thin nails and polish will easily chip. Super glue is a must. You should have super glue laying somewhere in your household because you never know when you need super glue. This one is professional nail glue. You can also use regular super glue. This one is stuck and I'm having a hard time taking it out. I can't stand super glue. I have a love dislike relationship with super glue, but this one is really stuck. Now I know you have tea bags in your home. At least one person in your household loves to drink tea. I know I love to drink tea and you can tell that I have used this tea bag several times. It'll save a broken nail no matter how bad it is. As long as the nail is attached, a tea bag will be your best friend, I promise. I have a video on how to repair a broken nail using a tea bag and super glue, so I'll put the link down below. It's well worth watching. This base coat is the best base coat you'll ever use. I have used so many different brands of base coats and this one I've been using for at least 10 years. I will not change whatsoever. It leaves a rubbery layer on your nails so that the polish adheres to it and it dries super fast. It creates a smooth canvas and prevent polish from staining your natural nails and your polish from peeling and the bottle will last a very long time, long time. Everyone raves about Seche Vite, and if I pronounce it correctly, I think I have. I have used that before. I did not like it whatsoever. It's very thick in consistency, and the bottle, halfway through the bottle, it dries out super fast. This, on the other hand, is completely different. It's so much better. It's thinner in consistency. This is by INM. It is out the door uh, top coat. It is fast drying, super shiny, and this does a great job in smoothing out uneven application and visible brush strokes. And I also recommend that you wait at least five to 10 minutes before you apply a thin coat over your polish. And this bottle will last a long time, much, much longer than the other brand. As far as nail polish goes, it's really up to you on which brand or which color you wanna use. All brands do a great job. I don't have a favorite. I don't have a least favorite. They all do a very nice job. It's all about the base and top coat. It's all about that base, about that base. <laughs> but it's really, it's all about the base and top coat. Now, what I have on is by OPI. It's Don't Sakura Tease Me. Check this out. This is OPI's Don't Sakura Tease Me and this is China Glaze. I had no idea I had these two. Like I didn't even think about buying a dupe for OPI, but this is a dupe for OPI. This is Bad Landing. They are identical. I kid you not, you can't even tell the difference. I can't. So you can go, um, if you're starting out, go with sheer colors, lighter colors, the beiges, the nudes, um, the light pinks. I have so many nail polishes, you guys. I can sit here and show them to you all day. And if you wanna go crazy, go with black, blue, go with lots of glitter. I just, you know what, happy shopping. And uh, yeah, it's really up to you which colors or which brands you wanna use. I prefer to use hand lotion. I rarely use cuticle oil. I've had this uh, cuticle oil from California Mango Mango Magic. You can buy this at Sally's Beauty Supply. I think it comes in different sizes. You can see I don't use this very often. I've had this for a long time. This helps keep your cuticles soft and also shiny if you like that shiny look but it immediately absorbs into the cuticle area. So I guess this is a really good thing to use cuticle oil. Maybe I should use this more often. Yeah, I guess I should. Although a lot of people love to use cuticle oil. I, I can take it or leave it. So I don't think I missed anything. Oh my gosh, this hair, seriously. <laughs> but I'm looking around to see if I missed anything. I don't think I did. I think I covered everything. If I missed anything, please let me know down below. By the way, this is where I store some of my nail polish and some of my nail accessories in a basket. I probably need about 10 of these to store the rest of my nail accessories and nail polishes. But this you can buy probably at Target or a container store. I don't remember where I bought this. It might have been... I don't know, maybe the container store. I've had this for years now. If you want me to do a gel nail polish essentials video, let me know, I'd be more than happy to do that, but uh, it won't be for a while, sad to say. I will put that on my 
video list, my future video list to film. I do have other videos I would love to film and um, upload before then. I will definitely do that. But let me know if you'd like to see gel nail polish essentials video. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays. Have a wonderful, safe holiday and uh, enjoy it with your family and your loved ones. And you'll see me before then. Don't worry, because I know I'll see you before then. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.